Surprise, surprise, welcome you back to uh, ThinkTech Hawaii's Human Human Architecture. And surprise is because just an hour ago, we called it POW, as unfortunately ThinkTech Hawaii is uh, calling its entire program due to the lack of financial support. But um, we said there's going to be exceptions to the rule and ad hoc shows will be. So you consider this to be the first ad hoc show to Human Human Architecture. And it's uh, with uh, two Martins, the one here, Martin, uh, Martin Despang from Germany, and you, Martin Ancelini from Colombia, but both of us here in Hawaii. <laughs> no. So, and this is also for you, Jay, because when we got sentimental about, um, you know, reflecting on uh, where does this all go when we would have actually criticality back on the island, which we are not uh, having yet. But what is criticality for to obviously make a better built environment? So this is a unique thing that you, Martin, we will report on uh, that actually two disciplines got brought together. They're very crucial, not only for what's the major economical drive in our uh, island here, which is tourism, but also what impacts us the most as sort of an artificial environment that is not anywhere close to be compliant with our most beautiful natural environment. And this is this is the built environment and mostly is hospitality. So this time we brought two uh, classes together. One is TIM 333, which is coincidentally almost the amount of episodes of human human architecture. So doubling up 333. And that resides within the TIM School, the Tourist Industry Management, which is part of, got swallowed by Scheidler and our School of Architecture. And you, Martin, you are kindly representing actually both. We co-taught 333 and you are in 743. So you're kindly have been chosen uh, and, th you know, thankfully by your peers to represent both. So let's jump in. And basically say, and uh, usually you don't consider what you see already here. You consider, you know, with a built environment and us in Honolulu, you consider pretty much this here, which is Waikiki with, uh, you know, the turquoise water and whatnot. So next slide, uh, that gets depicted rather nostalgically these days on the postcard stands of the ABC stores. They got these retro postcards and it's all about the romantic good old days. So we started to think, how can we structure this class? And we want to do go through best practices from the past. So next slide. We started out as turn of the century with the Moana Surf Rider. Next slide went to the Pink Palace, the Royal Hawaiian. Next slide in the 50s. This is special because we considered it maybe the best to learn from. And that's why its manager, Ethel, who has kindly hosted us, hosts me again today. So that kind of glare around me and on my glasses is actually from the louvers of the breakers. Thank you, Ethel, of allowing us to also conclude it in what probably has informed us the most. Next slide, which is also um, on all levels because it's the most inclusive and it's the most easy breezy. So it basically works on all levels. Next slide. Uh, maybe better than um, you know some others, which are also very good as the Kahala. Um, um, hotel as here, which is, however, very exclusive, and the Kahala uh, Apartments, next slide, which their lease expires. So they're very inclusive right now, but by accident, because they're not worth anything anymore, because Kamehameha School could tear them down, which got beware, and you don't, Kamehameha School. Next slide, inclusive again, uh, I am Pace, Hala Manoa, um, uh, if you can live like that, you know, as as a student, uh, supported by the national government, because that's who runs it, not you age, we're not able to do that, then you're well off. And next slide, which is the, the 70s and the 80s, in their opulent way, we had Brad Segi Kava, in all the previous ones, all the managers have kindly welcomed us. Here was Brad Segi Kava speaking on behalf of um, his work with... Uh, Christopher Hemeter and the Hyatt and some crazy things when he got uh, as a model maker working for them they worked on this crazy thing that we will return to in a little bit but next slide is Ron's masterpiece the Holly Kolani as the ultimate of um, easy breezy um, and then his business partner next slide Larry Stricker because again uh, I think that Kauai is powing 
We needed to shovel things around and, and basically do this first and conclude. We're still in the process, you guys. Uh, wow. But we will then basically spoil us with Larry Stricker showing us his, which we insist to still call it Ihilani, now the Four Seasons out there west, which was very provocative, just like the Kahala to do something out there, literally and figuratively speaking, next slide, which it gets us to, which is the last time something really crazy and maybe too megalomanic happened, it was Chris Hemeter, and this was the model that Brad helped to work with, and that is where we basically go to, and you know, per the, the first slide, which is actually a real a postcard again that has you know bedazzling glitzy bedazzling on and so someone must have thought before they returned to retro with the postcards that honolulu and downtown honolulu must be of interest for some people coming here to our island so um last time um you know chris hemeter took it on and had this crazy proposal for around aloha tower that basically fell through and he was pissed and he left the island after next slide, you know, his, you know, coming out and coming up to having managed, you know, the Pink Palace and having been bought in the Ilikai, have become Don the Beachcomber's buddy at the International Marketplace and then build his kooky little King's Alley thing down there, which has been gone for some years without being replaced immediately to be basically replaced by something like this here, which we allow ourselves to call pretentious 2020s, because it's the same old double-loaded corridor where the parking garage ironically looks better, more tropically exotic because you got plants there, versus next slide, the whole tower, which is pretty much a copycatting of the across the street, Lilia, um, and, and, and again, it's the same old, and next slide, is based upon and built upon gravity. And you might at this point, we gave ourselves the right to say, hey, how about the end of gravity? Because where has gravity gotten us um, to, to invasiveness, to massiveness, to hermeticness? You saw the, you see the Lilia there in the back, it's a microwave to the west and the little sort of curvy, linear, you know, um, lanai's are not doing enough to shade it. I mean, the new one, and we see the Lilia in the back. So it's the same old, the same thing. It's actually turned around, doesn't make it better because the setting sun is basically gonna, gonna bake it. Um, and that's, that's not a good thing. And that's the other postcard that we will soon show, but here it is already again, uh, or, or initially, these are the golden sunsets of Aloha which um, only on a postcard look good and make you feel good. In reality, makes you damn hot because you don't make buildings face that setting sun. Reminds me of the many shows with you, Martin, with your great proposal for Lahaina and DeSoto, our um, you know, partner in crime on the shows, that taught us from his culture that it is called hot setting western sun. That's what Lahaina means. So don't do. And we, we learned this the hard way, the most tragic yeah. way. So here we're doing it again. We're building another Lahaina Tower. And of course, you know, we want it to not be safe, so we don't build it out of wood, but out of concrete. But that's actually, you know, just spurring and fueling kind of climate change. So yeah, and then at, this point, at yeah. this point, we can say after a trip along the last 70 years of good architecture, uh, we have learned what tourists like about coming to Hawaii, what we have learned about uh, low energy consumption architecture, good environment, inclusive environments, maybe exclusive environments, but inclusive to nature. And then uh, what we are seeing here is what we have not learned about good things, you know? Yeah. And sometimes it takes, you know, someone to really show it to us because we're blind and blind signed it. We don't, I mean, yes. we see it, right? We see it right there, but we don't think about it. I now live a few blocks over in my new place, and I have these invasive, monstrous fossil dinosaurs running down the street, going back from delivery or going there. It is really monstrous, and it is dinosaurs, it is fossil. And, you know, although Jurassic Park was a movie that was played here and staged it here, but yeah. Uh, there is another one that's a better one that wants to open our eyes. Next slide. And that is James Cameron, who we know uh, because we can read it, that he had his uh, crew, his, his, his uh, film crew, 
go to Kauai, go in a jungle and immerse themselves with the spirit of Avatar. And so we say we got to call him up uh, and having to ask him if he went through Honolulu on the way to Hawaii, which, uh, Kauai, which is very likely. And we want to ask him, was uh, Kaka'ako, show quoted at the top right, what inspired you to um, basically script uh, Bridgehead City, which you see down there, a screenshot from the movie, which is the, the sort of epitome of the evil, invasive, imperial coming, taking over, suppressing, killing nature. And so no one, you know, depicted that better than James. And since, again, we know he was coming here for the good, we got to ask him, maybe was he also inspired by the bad? So what do we all do? We don't want to give up on, you know, on gravity entirely. And so what do we do to maybe still keep the hope up? And that's next slide. Where and when was that? And what was it? Yeah. Here, we are in Germany in a, in a much less, in, in Munich, in a much less uh, tropical and nice environment. And, and this is a very nice example, example of what could be done. Uh, this is the Olympic Village of, of, of Munich, on which we really have, I mean, we can walk around without cars, cars are underground, uh, or uh, are even like uh, pieces of museum for people that still want to like highlight the beautiful things about uh, mechanics. Uh, but you, you, we can live in a nice environment uh, without uh, really needing uh, to be enclosed, no. We were uh, uh, walking around with uh, uh, virtually with Martin, uh, seeing like smart housing units, affordable housing for that were designed for sportsmen and women, and now they are apartments for students, young professionals. Uh, uh, super interesting on the space on which there is everything. There is everyone, different uh, incomes, different uh, populations. Uh, rich people, uh, people without not that much money, and so on. Yeah, and this is again, um, if you would transplant that to Hawaii, it actually would work pretty well because orientation fen fenestration, these are facing south. They got the lanais, they got planar troughs, they grow stuff in there. You've got the yeah. overhang of the one above you. So it's actually, you know, rather universally, um, you know, savvy. And again, as you said, you know, we Germans got that super accurate, you know, um, kind of, uh, you know, reputation. And of course, BMW, the original plan, which we started out to is right across. And this gets me sentimental because my grandpa had one of that 3.0 CSI and it was almost that color. And so that got me very sort of sentimental as also my father designed my grandpa's home in that era and in that spirit and in that notion both of our parents being architects. And um, so that's just uh, one of the things that yeah. connects us besides them having given us the same first name. However, you got the fancy twist that I'm jealous of above the eye. Next slide. So German <laughs> engineering and cars that we keep up here as our pre eyeing mobile and having done all the footage of the most of the 333 shows, this is our new friend, Thomas Auer from TUM, the Technical University in Munich coming here the first time having been with you in studio, in crits, and we drove by this building and basically we had the critical discourse of saying, well, this is it. Actually, from a climatic point of view, this could be it, it's ready to move in from a cultural one, which has moved, has been mumu'd. The so uh, abundant reports, there's an exhibit in the Honolulu Museum of Art about Aloha shirts and mumu's. But a mumu you can take, put on, which they have to, but you also can take it off immediately. So here, don't even put the mumu on. Of course, culturally, we're not there. People think you need to now encrust, enclose, suffocate ACs, or we're saying, what if? But in all honesty, again, it's still thermal mass and it's still high, you know, embodied energy, which is concrete. So from the whole life cycle, we talked about in the criticality show about Fred Bernstein, who is Fred Sandburn's friend, who urges all the architectural critic to not just look at the operative energy, but also as the embodied energy of the creation. So on that side, even if we, we could sort of, um, you know, make it less bad and, and stop here now and have people move in and it would be affordable and cheap and would do all that. But but damage is already caused through the through the tectonics, right, through the technologies of gravity. So next slide, that postcard again, let's just say, okay, how we undo, we stop, we pow, 
uh, building, uh, continue to build a hot Lahaina uh, downtown Honolulu. And so how can we basically convert that into a cool, literally and figuratively speaking? And that's what you're doing. So next slide, where do we go to, to check that out in the midst of it, right? To, to see it from inside out. And so the next slide was us in one of the offices of um, basically Norman Lacayo's Harbor uh, Court Building, which is a schizophrenic, it's a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. And so this is like the whoever is the bad guy. This is the office part that's totally facing south. And we experience how it is to be like a fish in the tank and the water temperature is cranked up. Only a sea keeps you alive. But but next slide, where is the potential? We saw this somewhere where they found it cool to kind of have the industrial look, right? So they scrape off the surfaces, but it's more of a style reason. But what could be the actual substantial benefit of doing that? Yeah. Local materials. I mean, uh, trying to, there are, I mean, we, we all know that everything, even energy, it's imported to, to the Hawaiian Islands. And this dependency, uh, which actually works as a colonial uh, tool, no, on which we cannot thrive. I mean, here by ourselves, but we depend on on other things. Of course, exchange is marvelous and is beautiful and uh, is it implies richness. But it, when it tends to the built environment, it's like, why don't we can use the materials that are found around? No, wood, uh, stone that we are seeing here even the aggregates, and, and start thinking uh, a built environment that really responds to uh, what we have been doing here for centuries and what we could still be doing. No? Yeah, and that's kind of almost upcycling as there are these many terms of what we want to cycle. So this is upcycling by, by actually, you know, giving, it's not repurposing, it's actually giving the building the purpose that it initially you had. And the next slide is our, you know, that we love the most. This is Steve Owls, our old hippie, Mo, uh, Mr. Most Easy Breezy from the past, who built Davis um, Pacific Center. And uh, it was 70, so he had to be corporate, but the hippie was and how we knew him and funded got the closest to him and DeSoto and I sort of. But, you know, he would have, uh, he sort of imagined to be this sort of unmumu. So just take the the glass off, and we're just basically reanimating its anatomy, so to speak. And rather than what we see in the small picture in the picture where, you know, they had shown us what they're doing, compartmentalizing it and basically, uh, you know, again, uh, uh, the, the reintroducing the terror of tropical territorialization by chopping it into units, drywalled, $600,000 mortgage for the end of your life having to breathe air conditioning and all that stuff why don't you uh, perform a deterritorialized lifestyle and basically look into that because you got the primary shelter from the sun and the rain you already have you're not going to get a frostbite like where i'm from where we just were in munich where it took you guys we're not going to get a heat stroke where i was where i came before here in the hot desert of arizona you know that usp unique selling proposition as my dear wife Sweetheart Suzanne, having the degree of the ones that we have the pleasure to work with this semester, he has. That's the USP to basically capitalize on. So, next slide, yeah. this is where you there took is... uh, the timbers to you into the architecture realm, right? Yeah, yeah this is, uh, I mean, there is a good principle on what we were seeing before is that bringing people back to the, to the downtown and keeping the city alive, you know? Uh, because the pandemic and these new paradigms uh, of tourism uh, are showing us that uh, the way on which we will be related to space will be different, and we have to face that. You know? People will be moving around much faster, and uh, we, we really have to keep the square meters, square feet that we already have alive. You know? And uh, with the, the huge amount of space that we already have built, we can do good things even we, we have to, as, as you were saying, Martin, subtract some elements, uh, some uh, uh, complications, some problems, uh, unnecessary problems that we ourselves pose. Uh, and uh, on-strip architecture, to do what you were saying before, is like really generate 
three skips. Yeah, and that's next slide. It was the teaser for us all together, the kind of the morphology from over the years of, again, the, the fossil hermetic, you know, status quo over trying to sort of um, decompose it, as we were saying, you know, kind of yeah. um, de-stress it in, in, in aerating it and still, you know, not giving up on gravity and, you know, having tried to do skinnies for more substantial reasons that the architectural elites, the architecture like you know, with Metno Blatt's former bust, you know, Vignoli did for formal reasons, but for performative reasons. But basically, and you know, you went through that this semester as well as as one of the steps. But just saying, you know, okay, we're not flamingos. The flamingo is just, you know, hasn't figured out to stand on one leg. We're just too clumsy, too stupid to do that. So maybe we got to turn to be spiders. Maybe we got to turn to be Janes and Tarzans um, as maybe the more conducive way because again even the flamingo i was looking at them for 12 years from the waikiki grand down there and you know they they might have you know a hard time here as as sort of again and not not this is, again the, the the literal and probably people will say well spiders are not endemic either but this is a metaphor right that we're kind of trying yeah. to just as Cameron, you know to make people understand more what we're saying because it might be hard to understand but next slide is uh, us in the alchemist chamber where there's a collection of some means and methods and some tools, uh, you know, from the past generations of tree texture classes introducing the, the young ones. Because you rightly so said, Martin, you know, then, um, you know, the, uh, these are the future managers of, of hospitality industry. So they are the ones who say what's going to be done. So if they get educated and educate themselves and then reach out to their team members in the architecture world, that then has the potential to change it for the better. Um, you know, yeah. and that's what we're trying to do. And next slide, who is here and what why is he so important for us? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And then related to that is that we have to, I mean, as architects, we have the responsibility of really. Uh, 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 taking a twist and interpretate and conceptualize the, the program that is given to us. But of course, if we have good clients as them, as uh, hopefully the future travel industry managers, uh, open uh, uh, to new ways of designing and most important, like really understanding what is happening around, no? really under understanding yeah. what is happening with climate change, what is happening with uh, these globalization processes, we will be able to 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 work in a like in, a, in, in easier. You know? It will be much easier for yeah. us uh, architects, also yeah. for them. Yeah, and well, I suppose not from here, but the Soto is here. He holds on the left an example of the absurdity and gravity coming to an end as the sort of patching of the seawall of the of the. Um, the reef um, hotel out there, the Outrigger Reef Hotel that keeps falling off and the desperate attempt to win over nature while the Soto in the sort of the tradition of his ancestors and his crazy king, you know, shopping all around the world and bringing potential good stuff as he did with Edison's light bulb that he then had before the president of the United States got into his White House, for example. So this is making sort of you know the 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 weaving material of the the spiders, the fryscapers uh, using technology um, as, for example, uh, applied in Germany, but elsewhere as well, where they melt, um, you know, basalt again and make it into fibers. And next slide, again yeah. on that trip, I mean, showing you the best of gravity was only to show you the best of integrity, which is the Munich Olympic Center there. So we went and, and checked it out up close. Also, spring break, I went to Mallorca and uh, sharing Gaudi's crazy, uh, pushing the already, you know, as, uh, you know, dematerialized as possible gothics to the most and suspending the altar kind of hovering thing there. So then all come home in full circle, which you guys are currently in the midst of it here, um, together with others in the world as the artist Saraceno or local artist Kylie Chun with Hong Tao. Zhao having done an installation, and you had the unique opportunity to be with the utmost master 
um, of Pensegrity with Larry Medlin. You had a whole session with him, an afternoon session, you know, in your yeah. studio, really uh, introducing you not just to the technology, but to the not just to the how, but to the why. And that's yeah. the next slide. You know, we had to pull from the past here because of the, you know, powering fintech why. Now we're you're in the last plowing through week, and so this is going to be sort of added on and enriched by your current, you know, uh, team members in class. And next slide, um, again, using, um, yeah, we already jumped to the next one. Um, and we can jump to the next one because we only have two minutes left. Again, uh, seeking inspiration from, from James uh, Cameron in Avatar. And to the left is, the, I think, the most, um, for us, a sketch by the great Fry Otto, Larry's collaborator, where he sketched Pensegrity. It's infilled with habitation, but since it's in tempered, it's, it's encrusted, it's winter gardens and stuff that we don't need here. So we think it needs to come home next slide, which is again, that you are sort of irrigating and, 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 and aerating the urban fabric and make water as you know, Dustin Chang has done in his thesis at the top right with evaporative cooling. Um, you know, um, uh, curtain walls that replace the invasive glass curtain. Next slide. So then it could eventually come back home to what everyone, uh, you know, associates with uh, Honolulu, which is Waikiki as this model from almost a decade ago by your peers. And next slide, which is a working tool demonstrating and um, performing the easy breezy. So then coming home, uh, full circle. Next slide. To have our easy breezy uh, modern master Ron Lindgren and his Holly Kolani, which he said for the original Wirehars, our client, they were planning to do more open to the elements uh, of circulation, as you see on the very left. And then through the actual client that it got turned over to, they hermeticized it more. But he approved, next slide, the cool forever young guy he is to, to jungleize it, to Fryscape it here, depicted by Kendall Leonard. So all that, we're at the end, um, but thank you to everyone. Thanks for the team. Thanks to our timers here. Thanks to our, you know, architecturists, which we will see in an hour to strategize the remaining time, the final sprint. But last, not at all least, thanks to John Kratz, who brought this all together. He basically reached out to us and he said, you want to do this together because in the past, a colleague has done it who was one of his, and he thought he makes the tourist students design, and it was not fun for them. Now, I think it was, at least for us, it was fun. And again, you choose not to speak yourself, your timers, but through us, but we just then take the right to convey how much fun it was. Basically, have you as the inspiration, um, have you as the programming people that tell us what we can do. And if you're educated, and you go and you want to basically dream the future here and now in reality, you charge us with that as the architects. And how beautiful is that? And was it? And will it be? So thank you all. Thank you, Martin, and having. Thank you, Martin, also for making this happen. <laughs> it was great. Yeah, so it was a great semester. No, I think uh, uh, we reflect a lot. And uh, it is beautiful to see things from the eyes of a student from other careers different from architecture. We have to talk with, as we are doing here, to, to talk outside the box, to talk outside the academia, and to talk within different knowledges, you know, wisdom. Okay. That being said, thank you all. Thank you, Martin. And keep up that interdisciplinary innovation, that innovative interdisciplinary for the future. And until then, See you on some of the ad hoc shows that when things get too crazy here in Honolulu, we have to come back and jump in. So see you then. Bye bye. We want to announce that ThinkTech Hawaii is moving into a new phase and will not be producing regular talk shows after April 30th.
we will retain our website and YouTube channel and will accept new content on an ad hoc basis. We are also developing a legacy archive program to provide continuing public access to our content. If you can help us cover the costs of the transition and the development of our legacy archive program, please make a donation on thinktechaway.com. Thanks so much. Aloha.